Oh, oh, it's it. <laughs> hey, who left this bowl of onions here? This is the final episode of Bakugan Legends. I'm totally not crying right now. Oh my god. Okay, let's see if I could go through this without crying again. This is so, spoiler warning, yeah, this is gonna get kind of emotional, so uh, just, let's just get on with it. The first part is power in numbers. I kind of wish because this is the final episode that they gave a special different graphic like in the two specials and evolutions. So yeah, we continue from the last episode and what's this? No Dan narration? As I expected, the power of Nova is unlimited. Usually Dan will be narrating a recap of how the final boss battle is going and the stakes involved and all that. This is it, the showdown between Tico and me and Drago. My friends showed up and together we created the ultimate Bakugan! And so the ancient faction artifacts came to life through Drago! All that brawling and world saving has made us heroes! But here surprisingly, they just went right into the story. Heck, Gen doesn't even appear on screen for the first two minutes of this episode. When you so rudely infiltrated my castle, you were foolish enough to speak aloud, and I overheard your plans. So we were right about the part about Hanosh hearing Athena in the seventh episode. Remember, they did give us a scene of Hanosh's realization, albeit quickly and brief, that I'm sure some people would overlook, but it is a great attention to detail nonetheless. Also, it's pretty cool that they got the main villain to use a fourth wall break as a tactical strategy. That is pretty funny, but neat at the same time. And Lawrence Bain's performance here is absolutely phenomenal, very menacing, and very evil, like the embodiment of pure darkness. Great performance. Hanosh took down the rest of the awesome brawlers and a mirrored thundershock animation because I guess they can't have them interfere in the 1v1 fight, but what the heck, they're actually using Baku cores? Great to see, after the entire season of not using them, they actually throw some. The action animation though is pretty cool to see. So, because firing the Nova Light at Hanosh would just make him stronger, Dan suggests firing it at Drago X Nilius to power him up instead. Something about Benton using the game controller to control this thing is pretty funny to me. And I will happily accept more Nova Light! Yeah, Hanosh, just shut up. You should have let them fire it at you. So, in a really cool moment, Drago X Nilius managed to separate its forms into the different forms it was able to turn into, like Fusion, Geogon, Gear, Strength, and even Nano Gear. That part I don't get because that would mean that Drago's normal form is holding fury. Also, Magnus didn't even get Widow or Nilius X Enoch back. What the heck? Nilius X Enoch is an actual toy in Legends. Why didn't he come back in the show? Even though this was pretty much a show-off scene for all the forms, the action that comes right after is pretty bitchin' spectacle to watch. Just the overall action where they are just kicking Hanosh around is really good entertainment, as if it's to give us this feel-good moment before Hanosh kicks sand right in our face and ruins it with one attack. But really enjoy the performances of Jason DeLine, Corey Doran, Jonah Weinberg, and Julius Cho here. Almost like they're giving it all they got into this performance because they feel like they want to give us one last hurrah. And this piece of animation when Hanosh takes Vestroya's energy is bad ass! But Hanosh unleashes the Falco Punch, which was a super powered finishing move that they did earlier and they teased in 7th episode, but they never actually got to see its full power until now, completely obliterating all the form, leaving our heroes in deep trouble. So we continue with Bakugan Brawl. Okay, seriously, why wouldn't they just have this be a whole 22 minute episode? It wouldn't make a difference. Not only is introducing a new part very stupid, it just slows the action down. So before Hanosh can unleash a Frieza energy attack on the planet, Winton suggests using the Crystal Planet to seal Hanosh away again, and Dan, in a great performance by Jonah Weinberg, declares his power with bonds is greater than Nova, and in really great callback scene to Battle Planet, he rolls out Drago's original Battle Planet form, which I know it's supposed to be nostalgia bait but this was still awesome as if all the five years of being a fan of this reboot series is being awarded for us reminding us that the days of the banner planet season is never forgotten so Dan suggests charging the Crystal Planet with Nova Energy to seal Hanosha away again, and everyone rolls out their Bakugan to help, and w wait a minute, before Nilius and Drago fuse again, Drago turned back into Nova form all of a sudden. So after the others, instead of charging the planet with Nova Energy, they just, I guess, hold Hanosh down while Dan and Drago unleash a giant Kamehameha on him. I really think Hanosh should have easily shaken them off, considering how hyped up his power level is, but whatever. But an amazing animation that looks absolutely amazing as hell, did I tell you it looks amazing? They push the crystal planet down onto Vestroya on top of Hanosh and seal him away for good again. That planet should have been a lot bigger. Her battle with Hanosh 
was over. Thanks to Fuzzy's warp ability, all our friends from Earth were able to come and lend a hand. AKA the characters that we weren't able to include in the season because of the runtime, but here they are just because. Despite not having voice lines, they are still credited in the end credits. We had Vestroya looking as good as new. Wow, that was quick. But however, the story doesn't have a completely happy ending, as Earth and Vestroya unfortunately are still separating because remember, that was why Hanosh got released in the first place. So the Bakugan are now forced to return and stay on Vestroya, otherwise Bakugan cannot draw on Vestroya energy to survive on Earth. Man, this is honestly the saddest thing I've felt, all the emotions here from everyone on the cast. This is not Dan, Winton, Leah, Shun, Lightning saying goodbye to Drago, Trox, Patrix, Hydrus, and Halcor. This is Jonah, Devin, Mark Rita, Jamie, and Will saying goodbye to Jason, Yukal, Janice, Scott, and Dan Pechenegivik. I gotta be honest guys, I was a wreck watching this scene. This really feels like a huge major goodbye to everyone in the cast. But I wonder why Ajit, Magnus, and Athena are left out of this goodbye. Dan? I had so much fun with you. Thanks, Drago. No, Dan. I'm the one who should be thanking you. <laughs> Hey! I also wonder why there's no actual tears animated though. The voice actors are acting like they're crying, but the animation's not there. The only one shown crying is actually lightning. Would have definitely added more emotion to this scene. This was good and really sad, and it really was so hard to accept that this really was the end. I think they should have ended the episode at this last shot, but unfortunately they still left three minutes in this episode runtime, so I guess instead of giving us something like a post-time skip, like, I don't know, a five years later thing or something? No, Dan and the others have returned to school, and life on Earth resumed without Bakugan. For like, a week. But it turns out, Buzzy can teleport the Bakugan to Earth once in a while as sort of a vacation thing. And we get the return of old Bakugan from the whole series like Cyndius, Gilator, Falcron, Fennica, and- Oh come on, why Kubo? Time to battle, Dan Kuzo. We're gonna take you down again. I seem to remember that we won last time. What the? There's an Auralus Viserox, a Darkest Fate Ninja, and an Aquas Lepithion, and an Aquas Fangzor. Those are not any of the Awesome Brothers Bakugan. Shouldn't a Lepithion be green like what they showed? Fate Ninja and Viserox should be blue. Um, whoops. And the episode ends with Dan and Magnus having one last Bakugan brawl to end the episode, the season, and the series. So that was the final episode of Bakugan Legends. Let me know what your rating of the show was in the comments down below. This was a great finale to leave the season, although it did follow the same formula as previous seasons Big Bad Guys, that was not the focal story here. This was really an episode that celebrated the series and the 5 years it took to get here. Although I think I can get if people will call this just fan service, I think that it still works in this case, and that ending was really sad gut punch having to say goodbye to the Bakugan characters that we have grown with in the last 5 seasons. Still, what could have made this from good to amazing I think could have been a time skip where heroes would be so much older and they came back to where it started and to see Buzzy again realizing he can transport the Bakugan to Earth to, or transport the humans to Vestroya. I think I've got a longer video that would explain it a lot more that I'll work on but overall the entire finale was some great fun action. The voice performances were amazing, the ending was super sad and emotional but they still left us off on a good note. This episode I think I'm gonna give it a Bakutastic. Thank you for joining me in reviewing Bakugan Legends. Be sure to press the like button and give us a subscribe for more awesome Bakugan content. And if you want to see the other Legends reviews, you can check them out on the channel right now. I've been Haru Ren, and thank God for Rapid Fire. Bye!